Watch out for this credit repair scam because it's been landing people in jail. When you repair people's credit for a living, it's all about the personal connection. This is all about helping people. Meetings in which he's alleged to have been selling a new type of identity fraud called synthetic identity fraud. You go to people who are desperate to have their credit restored. Everything that I do is... Nowadays in the U.S., you need good credit for everything to get a job, to put a roof over you and your family head. And with this high inflation and high cost of living, even food is up. And I think we all are frustrated after we leave the grocery stores. So it's no wonder people are desperate. You're making us pay for grapes, apples, things that God gave us for free. Ha! Ha! Da, 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 you will burn in hell when I'm through with you. This desperation is driving people to take risks and trust and believe anything these credit repair companies are telling them. But by doing that, that can land you in jail. Kind of ID manipulation is against the law. They're just the one marketing this to people who are unknowing or unsuspecting that they are actually violating some federal law. In New Jersey, four people pled guilty to stealing $200 million using synthetic ID fraud. Typical ID fraud in which a thief steals someone's identity. Synthetic fraudsters help invent new identities. Now the synthetic fraud is even affecting car dealerships. Perfect credit, um, driver's license, I mean, you name it, it was all there. A customer who looked great on paper in the market for a luxury sedan. This says this woman's identity was a sham, and she not only fooled them, he says she tricked the DMV and the bank where she got the car loan from. This lady was dialed with real documents. I mean, you, documents that you couldn't tell. So everything looked, you know, legit. And uh, lo and behold, it wasn't. An undercover NBC5 investigation. You're about to see how some families trying to improve their credit scores can end up in trouble with the feds. Now, one working mom is warning others after what sounded like a quick way to boost her credit turned into a nightmare that nearly put her in prison. Many people with trouble credit wait to the last minute to try to work on their credit scores, just like the case of this single mom, and it landed her in hot water with the feds. It's important if you have lower credit scores that you start working on your credit now because it doesn't have to take a lot of time, depending on what's going on with your credit, to improve your credit scores, then to try to find options at the last minute. And my users with my elite credit system, like Janice, who was able to remove her negative items within four months. And Janice was able to move over to my business credit program. And now she has business credit in that short period of time. And Sean, he was able to go from a 612 credit score all the way up with his credit scores over 770 in a matter of six months. And now his credit scores is at 803 and he got business credit in my business credit coaching. If you need my help, you can click the link in the description of the video and in the pinned comment section and go to my website and download my free heart inquiry removal package. So let's look in this story. As investigators tell us they see more people trying to improve their credit using what's called a CPN, a credit privacy number. Websites sometimes advertise them as an ID number you can use to keep your social security number private. But some people buy CPNs believing they can use them while applying for credit cards to build a brand new credit history. And that can lead to big trouble. If you want a new credit card, a new car, a new house, but need to boost your credit score, a CPN may seem like a magic solution. Social security number private. Now, CPNs are commonly used by celebrities, members of Congress, and witnesses protected by the federal government. I see a lot of advertisements of people on TikTok and even here on YouTube advertising CPNs as an option for you to get credit but it's just not true you have to watch that because this is clear fraud i heard everybody was doing it so i was like okay we'll do this swatisha keith bought a cpn from someone advertising on craigslist so this sounded like a chance to start over yes start brand new is what it felt like she paid fifteen hundred dollars for a nine digit cpn nine digits like a social security number she says the seller told her she could use a CPN instead of her social security number to apply for credit. This would give her a new credit history, a chance to wipe her old history clean. Now, the really sad part, they swindled this single mom out of $1,500. People understand you can dispute for yourself for absolutely free by writing your own dispute letters if you review your credit reports. Even if you owe a debt, this still doesn't give them the right to report that debt against you. It has to be 100% accurate and 100% complete. And when you review those accounts on all three credit bureaus, I can just about guarantee 
you're going to find an inaccuracy and you can get that negative item removed off your credit report. At first, it seemed to work. She used her CPN to get a new credit card and a loan for a new car. And within two months of me having it, I seen my credit score go up. It was in the 700. So I was like, oh, this is perfect. But the dream ended when federal agents showed up at work. I got taken downtown to the federal building where I was booked in help. The mother of three was facing up to 30 years in federal prison. How scared were you? I was terrified because I didn't think anything like that would ever happen to me because I've never, you know, I've never been in trouble with the law before. Now, just imagine facing 30 years for something that you really feel in your heart is legal. And the way that these people actually advertise this, they make it seem like it's legal because they saying, hey, celebrities do it. But where is that proof? or have them to name a celebrity that came out to say they have a CPN. Investigated CPN cases in Texas and Oklahoma as a federal agent with the Social Security Administration. He says when a credit application asks for your Social Security number, you can't use a CPN instead. Well, that is a false representation on a loan application. And, and that's against the law in this country. It's a federal offense. A Putting misinformation on a credit application is clear bank fraud and it could be wire transfer fraud. So do not play with that. You're better off by taking the time to build your credit or there's options where you can leverage business credit if you have lower credit scores, but you have ways to actually cash flow. So please don't take these options. Special Police Fraud Unit in Houston is seeing more people using CPNs to get car loans. Sergeant Darren Schlosser says some he's arrested seem completely unaware they're committing a crime because they read something that made them think it's okay. Investigators tell us many CPNs they see are really social security numbers belonging to children with no credit history. Or CPN sellers may use certain websites to identify numbers that have not been issued as social security numbers yet. Since banks sometimes run quick computer credit checks, they may not notice the number a person uses on an application is not the social security number they've used in the past. Now, one thing I would like to see in these stories, I do understand you're putting a lot of onus on the person using the CPNs, selling the CPNs, but let's look at the root of the problem. The root of a problem is a lot of these corporations is riding dirty too. How is it that when they don't follow the FCRA, and that's the Fair Credit Reporting Act, and they're allowed to slap items on people credit report, actually causing credit terrorism, whether you owe it or not, there should be some criminal offense connected with that too. Because I bet you, if we had that same standard that they do to actual citizens and people, we would stop all of this inaccurate reporting. Because one thing about them and the credit bureaus, you never see that pendulum swing the other way. So what I mean is, They'll have a lot of inaccurate information on people credit report. And it's about like 70% of credit reports have inaccurate information, but you will never see them give somebody good credit that don't deserve it. So when are we going to actually put some criminal charges against them? If we're making a standard that for you to live in the United States, you have to have good credit, then somebody needs to be criminalized on their side too. So we wondered who's been selling CPNs online in Texas. When the credit coach advertised a seminar at a Houston hotel, we sent one of our team members with a hidden camera, listening as the coach described himself as a CPN pioneer. See, I got in the CPN game before it was introduced to the internet. You know, I like to say that I'm kind of one of the founders. They scan every social network, and they're going to shut down every CPN eventually. Eventually, they're going to shut it down. And many of these people that are selling these CPNs they do have to have some accountability. It's just amazing to me um, how people can do other people the way they do just for a quick buck. And so it's, it's really a cycle of victimization. We called him to ask for an interview. He declined to speak to us on camera and told me he had only sold maybe 10 CPNs over the last two years, a far cry from what he said online. One month total, we have done over uh, 500 CPNs. Now, this is a lesson for a lot of these people using social media. You better watch what you put out there because it can land you like this gentleman in a lot of hot water. Henley told me he warns customers, quote, it's on you to tell the bank that you are using a CPN and that customers who use CPNs to apply for credit do that at their own risk. 
as you can see, people attitudes, when they get called out, they're going to actually change course and then they'll leave you holding the bag. So you better research everything that these people are telling you. He says CPNs he sells are not social security numbers belonging to other people. Shortly after our phone call, Manley posted this message on YouTube announcing we are not offering CPN numbers, then posted a video Just saying he's done time. with CPNs. Some of you spent almost two years on trying to figure this whole CPN thing out when you could have used that same exact time figuring out your credit report. Now, you definitely need to be suspicious when anybody is telling you, look, this will only work for a certain amount of time. Pretty soon, the banks is going to crack down on this. That's a clear indication that they might be telling you to do something that's not all the way on board. Now that he sees that he is actually caught, he starts to tell people the truth. And that's you should just take time to work on your credit. And that is the sum up of the situation. CPN sellers only break the law if they knowingly sell a stolen social security number or sell a fabricated credit history attached to a number. But authorities say many sellers offer only nine digit numbers, nothing more, shifting possible risks to customers. I wouldn't want to see anybody else going through what I had to go through. Swatisha Keith now warns people never to use anything but their social security number on a credit application. She avoided prison. Federal prosecutors agreed to drop the charges after she served 18 months probation and paid restitution. A story she wants others to hear if they're hoping for a quick fix. If I was them, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't dare try it because trust me, it's going to come to an end. Take time to work on your credit and make sure if you have anything that's reported inaccurate, you want to make sure you dispute with the credit bureaus. Keep doing your disputes at least three or four rounds. And if that negative item don't come off and you got your proof, you can report that company to the CFPB, and that is the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. They are the oversight for these companies. And don't get me wrong, I am not cheering or pom poming for the banking industry because at the end of the day, they have their part to play in this. And many of them are just reporting things against people. And you have other users of the credit system, like property management companies and different other companies like utility companies, and you might not really own that bill, and even worse, collection companies. So the system actually need an overhaul, and not just these people using CPNs need to be held accountable, the whole system need to be held accountable, and the US government need to enforce the laws that's already there first against those companies, because many of them are the bad actors. So I hope this information was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave it in my comment section. But if you got more detailed questions from me, you can go to my website and all your questions go directly to my cell phone. So I hope to see you guys in the next video. Stay tuned.